So, here are some notes from these lectures and exercises. There was I fixed some typos on your by Leonardo and uh, added two more exercises. So I'm slightly worried that you run out of stuff to do. Um, so just want to recall from last time that we had this notion of on a derived category there's this concept of a T-structure. And a T-structure is a way of producing a, an admissible abelian category inside our derived category. So the, the short exact sequence is in our abelian category that have the same thing as the distinguished triangles in the ambient triangular category. And what we're kind of trying to do is imitate the uh, that we start with an abelian category, we consider the corresponding derived category, and then we imagine that all we've got is the derived category, and how do we find this abelian category again? That's the question. And the, the kind of central motivation for all of this is the riemann hilbert correspondence. Which I won't go into at all. But it's very good to keep in mind um, but where on earth all of this T structures, these ideas of T structures in nature come from, which is that one has this derived category. So this is a derived category of um, <coughs> regular holonomic D modules. And then one has a functor to perverse sheaves, which is basically a derived solution. And this goes to not to perverse sheaves, but the constructible derived category of X. And it's an extremely deep and important result. This is an equivalence. And now, there's two natural T-structures here. So here one has the obedient category of D modules, and here one has the um, obedient category of constructible sheets, and these do not match. So this is a kind of absolutely archetypal example of a non-trivial derived equivalence. And then inside here, we have the um, perverse sheets, so MX perverse sheets. And these correspond to the So one way of thinking about this kind of looking looking for different heat structures on a derived category is uh, just imagine that I'm given this and I want to know everything that could possibly be equivalent to this, then I can look for heat structures on this. So now uh, we want to define this category and we'll do this by gluing so we imagine that we have the following situation we have our <coughs> right one should think that this is the derived category of, um, of constructive sheaves. And then imagine that we have a kind of open closed decomposition. So I, I will just state an axiomatic framework, but you really should think that this is derived categories on a, this, this is sheaves supported on a closed subset, and this is sheaves supported on an open subset. And so we have. And then we have adjoints on the left and right. This is 
that thing. And the question is, imagine that we have T structures on this derived pedigree and this derived pedigree. Can we kind of glue them together to produce a P structure on this one? So this is And the axiomatic framework of gluing. <coughs> uh, but there should be exclamation mark on the top. Uh, <coughs> yeah, so this is just completely silly what I've written here. Um, <coughs> so I want this, this to be left at your this. Yes. Your picture left is on top and right is on bottom. So you have some adjoints, right? Yeah. Some are, some of these arrows are on the left, some are on the right, but they go horizontally. So yeah, so I'm going to state the adjunctions now. Okay. <coughs> um, so we assume the so we assume the following um, first one. And the middle one is dx. Yes. I suppose. Not yeah. Z. But the, the, well, we just did this in a general framework of <coughs> three triangular categories and it's gluing. So we have adjunctions. So it'll be convenient to write you know, in, the, in the setting of sheaves, I lower star and I lower shriek degree for a closed inclusion and star and jab and shriek and shriek and shriek and degree for an open inclusion. And then we can just write the adjunctions um, I upper star, I lower star, I lower shriek, I upper shriek, I upper star.
and then we need to be able to decompose decompose any object in the middle. We kind of want this to be a short exact sequence of categories in some sense. So we want to be able to decompose any object in the middle in terms of pieces on Z and pieces on the complement. So for any And also the other way around. <coughs> where, where these, where um, all that. So the data of fixing these adjunctions is the same thing as um, you know, it, it includes the data of fixing some map from this function to the identity, etc. So, <coughs> so this should be reminiscent of these distinguished triangles for sheets. And the last so here you know by x a shift from x. <laughs> ah. Good point. <coughs> and lastly, the pi lower star, j lower star, j lower shriek are fully taken. Then, um, so now suppose we have two T-structures. Yeah, so assumption C means that uh, all these uh, sequences <coughs> are, are among distinguished triangles. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, suppose we have T-structures um, on on the two external edges of our, our short exact sequence in, in inverted commas. Then this lovely theorem whose proof I really recommend you attempt. It's not super difficult. Is that now if you consider the less than or equal to zero on x, you know f such that. So we, we should use stars for less than or equal to zero and tricks for I have a star there. This, as I said, is an exercise. It's an extremely good exercise to get used to trying to do papers. And please practice on trying to do And if you have trouble with this, 
exercise. Um, one get some hints from maybe uh, where this is true. Okay, so now. I want to, um, so basically what we'll do is we'll use this theorem inductively to define the abelian category of our sheets. But I just want to kind of do a first experiment, which I find somewhat confusing. And I think that it really nicely shows why perverse sheaves are kind of natural. The first experiment in doing. So one should see this this section as kind of an extended exercise, which is also on the exercise sheet. So we consider x to be p1. which we, we consider the kind of simplest non-trivial stratification of P1 as C union yeah. or let's say zero. So And we consider du, which is um, the complexes, which is <coughs> complex. C is simply connected. connected. Extremely simple derived category. So it turns out that this derived category is just equivalent to the derived category of vector spaces, as is this one. And now what we're going to do is experiment with gluing them together. So what happens? We glue these structures. Yielding um, so the P structures with parts <coughs> take the spaces inside um, the point and Both the systems on C shifted by D, that's 
inside the cube. Okay, so this is both the systems in the degree. You will see the PAC field. Okay. Is it on purpose that the complex CPU are not bounded or less simple? Or you... No, not at all. Just <coughs> I just want to take the full sub game of the very constructible tubes that's constant. So with yeah, it turns out it's just <coughs> So, so we will record our promotion of our right? So down this one. So if, you, if we imagine now a, a picture of what's going on, here we have the point and here we have the U. And then we imagine our complexes. Minus two, minus one, zero. Okay. And then the T structure on the point that gives us this guy is that's the point that connects with zeros. And then the we get our zero. Right? And then um, at some point here at minus m, I want to glue So in here we have vector k. Complex is concentrated in only one degree. And here we have local systems on in degree minus 10. And then we want to say, we want to understand what happens when we glue them together. Tell me what happens when m equals zero. I we we're gluing together local systems with, on a point with local systems on the complex. What happens? I mean, you don't need to know the answer. Just guess something. Exactly. Yeah. So in this case, um, the heart. And we've seen that this is equivalent. This is equivalent. To representations. Equivalent. Zero, 1, where this is the stalk at 0, and this is the stalk at, for example, 1 at some point that's not, not 0. And when we, saw, when we were discussing the draft motion, we had this condition that we should have a map to the invariance under monodromy. But here, because, because um, C is simply connected, there's no monodromy condition, so we get this quite simple case. And when m is 2, this is actually the, this is the Verdier dual, Verdier dual. If m equals 0, I'll explain why in a second. And so what we get is representation of this group. So 
so the key the key fact that I'm using there is that um, if so this will be important later. But the dual, if I consider the that if I play, apply BDA duality to local systems on a strata in degree M, I get local systems on the strata back again shifted by M minus twice the complex dimension of the strata. <coughs> Sorry? Minus M minus M minus minus M plus. Then your local system somewhere. So if it's a closed stratum, then it makes sense and it gives us, doesn't depend where you go. And so here we see a very important thing is that, so a consequence of this formula. So this formula just follows from the fact that the dualizing sheaf on, on a smooth thing is the, the constant sheaf concentrated in minus the complex, minus twice the complex dimension. So if you apply um, and this implies that the dual of local systems on x lambda shifted by the complex dimension just get, gets local systems back in the same group. And this is extremely important because this tells you that if you want things compatible with media duality, you should place things, for example, on points, you should place things in degree zero. On curves, you should put place things in degree minus one, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, this is what it is. So I'll move this board up in a second. <coughs> uh, so you should take the relationship of CP1. Yes. Yes. So when you say the relationship, it's not what people do on the brain journal. No. It's the coherent analog of the realizing chip. But in general, on a manifold, you get the orientation chip. And so the fact that complex algebraic varieties have an orientation, canonical like orientation chip. And now you can kind of, you can believe this, okay? Because if we apply Bedier duality, to, to these two T structures, where now we're assuming this is in degree zero and zero, this guy stays where it is because it's a point, whereas this guy moves down in degree minus two. And so that gives this. If M equals one, this is the only 38 cell fuel case. And it turns out that in this case you get the most complicated. It turns out that in this case, so this will be the point of this lecture to explain why. We get <coughs> such that here. And this is a famous example from representation theory. This is the principle of the category over it's not two. This is 
where the paternalistic conjecture begins, for example. And the M not in 0, 1, 2, the result that we <coughs> get a So semi-simple, in other words, boring. And the factors E and F are uh, not defined. Not defined yet. Mm -hmm. the, the rest of the lecture will be explaining what E and F are. <coughs> and a lovely exercise. So last time I explained that if you're working with the drive category, you have this realization function from dB of the half of the t-structure to the x. And the exercise is that this is an equivalence only if m equals 1. So if you look at this, this category homologically, it's quite complicated. And so there's no way this can be an equivalence if this part is semi-simple, for example. And you can see, it should be kind of intuitively clear, that um, this m equals 1 case is the most complicated abelian category of what we've written down. And this is the only one that's kind of complicated enough to capture this derived category. So now I want to define perverse sheaves in general, and then we'll concentrate on codes for the rest of them. So are there any questions about this example? Please ask if something, because I think it's important to understand simple. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I guess so, yeah. yeah. But if there's anything about the statements that is not clear, please ask. There is a more why with n equal not n equal to that not the realization of map is not any reasonable. If you ask. What, why this is not an equivalence when m is equal to zero? When m is not equal to zero? Ah, okay. Um, but the thing is that this, this guy has x2. Um, basically, yeah, if you look at the constant sheet, for example, this is a constructible sheet. And x2 of the constant sheet itself <coughs> is the same thing as h2 of p1, which is non zero. But so this the, this guy comes from some representation of the quiver. It turns out just to be the guy k, k and identity map. And the x, there's no x2. And so this cannot be an equivalent. But it's reasonably easy to see it's not an equivalent if n is not equal to one and it has a little bit tricky to see this in the equivalent for anything. T structures on local on 
the constructible sheet on every stratum. So this is F in um, the lambda. So I'll define the lambda in a second, such that it's motivation for this is that um, if you look at the heart of this is just local systems on its lambda in the in degree that only BDA cell fuel emits. Standard, um, 
So remember we define constructible to be first, you fix some stratification, you have the notion of lambda constructible, and then you allow yourself to refine the stratification arbitrarily, and that gives you the notion of just constructible. So that's a first sheet is a sheet which is construct which is lambda perverse to some lambda. Um, so we define if lambda prime refines lambda, we have a fully faithful. Any lambda lambda constructing the first sheet is so passing the direct limit gives this category M X. <coughs> And so from the gluing perspective, I think that this is very natural. We know what we want for those sheaves to be on every stratum, then we should just want them to be uh, local systems. And then we glue, we glue this together to get this category. And it's extremely, it should be extreme, it's un extremely unclear at the moment what actually comes out. And then the um, the gluing theorem implies that M X and M X are union, and also the general formula of general structure of T structure says that we have these perverse homology functions. And also the fact that we uh, glued, uh, glued things together that were stable under Verdier duality says that also these are abelian and stable. And I think that it's fair to say, so these are extremely important um, abelian categories and they're extremely, extremely difficult to understand in general. And I want to concentrate on curves now to give some feeling for what the, the kind of simplest non-trivial case of the machine is. And um, what, what is this left brain? So whenever we have a peak structure on a derived category, we have these um, cohomology functors for the heart. And I want to denote my cohomology function like this. So this is something that I can apply to any complex and I get a sequence of cohomology groups, which can be thought of as um, I, I mean one should think of this as by analogy with this function, which produces just a constructible sheet. This guy produces a conversion. And it's the cohomology sheets model. And often it's that more natural to consider these. these
but this is a category of n Sorry? This derived category of n is the regional derived category? Yes. It is always true. Uh, to my in general, quite general relation. So it's true in our setting if, if you're allowed to refine your stratification to arbitrarily. Uh, if you fix lambda, it's not true. No. Simple example, just take the constant stratification on P1. The, the abelian category of reverse sheets is just vector spaces. And it's hard to possibly be vector. How about that? Constructible she with respect to that certification. Yeah. But no, with these two. Sorry? If you take constructible she with respect to a, a, a fixed certification and that the seed with respect to the same certification. Yeah. Then it's not in general. In and this was a counterexample? Yeah. No. yeah. Basically the same example that I gave before, but P1. But somehow the, the moral, like somehow morally, the reason that uh, it works is that if you take a variety and you keep deleting hyperplane sections, then you can arrive at a K pi one. This is some, like, for example, curve, mm -hmm. delete points, and then you arrive at a K pi one. And this is true for any variety. So, well, anyway. I'll, well, basically, it's kind of it's if I have a perverse sheet for a given stratification and a refined stratification, it's obviously perverse for the refined stratification, <coughs> and so you just consider a directive that overall this category. So our picture will be x will be some curve. And then we'll pick something on location lambda, which will be u and then find out the many. Just math points. So I call these singular points of the stratification. So this is where my where my sheep is allowed to display interesting values. <coughs> um, and now there's um, two basic so but, um, the important fact is that perverse sheaves. Well, the stack of abelian categories. So what does this mean? It means two things. So if I have a morphism between objects which is zero locally, then it's zero. So now I'll do some kind of local, 
Because, uh, I mean, so perverse sheaves are something that I can assign to any, any variety. And so in particular, if I take an open covering of this, uh, I have a billion categories everywhere, and then I can bring these billion categories together, and the result will be perverse sheaves. So, for example, constructible sheaves satisfy this. It's, this is very easy to see. But the derived category is not a stack. And so it's not a... So, I mean, a simple example of this is if you take a morphism from the constant sheaf to itself, representing some non-trivial element of cohomology, this is zero locally, because cohomology is always zero locally, but it's not zero locally. <coughs> so that's an example where that fails in the graph. Um, okay, so lo just some local The first, the first thing is a kind of important example, which I possibly should have said earlier, which is that if we just take C and consider infinitely many distinct points in C, so get up. And we consider we let Jm denote C without the first endpoints. Then we can consider the following thing. We can take the constant chief on C, and then we consider J1 So these are all, these are inclusions of constructible sheets. So this is, a, this is the extension by zero of the constant sheet away from Z1. This is the extension by zero of the constant sheet away from Z1 and Z2, etc. So this looks like everywhere. Here I've deleted Z1. Here I've deleted Z1 and Z2. And they, these are all in bed inside it. And so this is kind of annoying. So this says that this has infinite length. Now, in order to make this, um, so this it turns out is a perverse sheet, but these two are not. But if we turn the triangle, 
you get the following. And now these are all perverse sheets. So the moral is that this, these maths that were all um, injections in constructible sheets become surjections in perverse sheets. So this is a, all perverse sheets and this is a shorty message. So this is a surjection. In the first sequence, so basically, I'll explain in a second that any perverse sheaf should on generically be a local system in degree minus one. Downstairs, they're all permission. And we achieve this by turning the triangle. Sorry, uh, something you have already explained, but if you have three objects in, uh, in the heart of uh, this structure, uh, there's, there's, you're going to short as a sequence if uh, this is a distinguished triangle, is equivalent yeah. in so the original category. Exactly. Point two is that if we have a local system, so L, a local system, so this is on C star corresponding to B. So this this is the same thing as giving the stalk at one and the monitor in mute. Then so in the exercises we saw the following fact. We left J to the conclusion of this time. The J lower star of L shifted such that it's perverse. Stalk at zero, at zero. M of the stalk at zero is um, invariant if M is minus one. Co invariant. M is zero and zero otherwise. Also, I have a star of J lower star of L zero, where I is actually doing the zero. So hence J lower star of L is the Similarly, so we'll make we'll have a seven minute break and then I'll return. Like semi fix. And 
now. Um, if 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 f is supported at the at z one, f is just um, it's a, just an element of what I was calling dz before, and so it's just a um, skyscraper. It's just a skyscraper, just a direct sum of skyscrapers. Okay, and this we we understand. Just putting vector, vector spaces at finite many points in our curve, we understand. Uh, so, assume that j at the star of f is non zero, where j denotes the inclusion of the non zero star. And we just saw, so we have this, we have this deduction map. And we just saw that this is perverse. And we can consider, we can complete this to a single triangle. So I'm kind of giving a lot, I'll give a lot of detail in this lecture to get used to playing around in triangulated categories with these brackets. So these are both. And now, um, if we apply PHI, we get a long exact sequence. So PH0 of F goes to PH0 J lower star down. Yeah. And this is all this going to the max longer? Yeah. Um, this goes further to pH zero of the cone. And this goes to um, pH one of F, which is zero. And it comes from pH minus one of the cone. And again, it comes from pH minus one of this, which is zero. And this is because this, these are perverse, this is, this is, this is the same. So in this particular example, one can think about this cone as being the kind of glued together kernel and toto of this map. So this is the kernel. This is a long exact sequence in perverse sheaves, so this is the kernel and the co kernel of our map. And also, phi is an isomorphism. On, uh, on U, so this implies that the kernel and the co-kernel are supported at Z1 to Zn, so this implies that there's sky scratching. So this should be kernel which should be down by one. So now we can draw a picture of what our 
So, 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 so why, why there is a morphism in the center? So again, why the uh, the h zero pervades of uh, the push forward of the pull back? Uh, of that? Yeah, just because. So we saw before that if you take j a star of a local system over a singularity, you always get a perversion. But you had to shift, no? I remember. Yeah, but um, but the shift is already implicit in f. Ah, if, okay, okay. If we restrict. Okay. <coughs> so now we look at the ordinary cohomology shoes. I mean non-perverse. So one more question. Uh-huh. So you can feel uh the same sparkle on top. And in fact, the J star, J star, L, T star, J star, L, shift requires some check, right? Yes. It's not obvious. I mean, yeah, this was the check that we did before the pause, where I explained that if you take a local system on a disk and you extend over a point, you get something that's perverse. But it's not a local system, it's perverse shift, right? But J up a star of F is a local system. I mean, it's a... It's a shifted point. Yeah, it's a shifted, exactly. It's a shifted local system. It's an element of perverse sheaves on you with the trivial stratification, which is just a local system. So if we just look at the ordinary cohomology sheaves of F, we can get a good picture of what, or a reasonably good picture of what F looks like. So the H minus 1 of F looks like So it's a local, it's a kind of local system with similarities. Okay, so on some generic part, it's just a local system in three one or a local system. Three minus one is in there. And then the H0 is only coming from the piece which is co curve of that triangle up there. And this is supported on quite a many points. It's fascinating. And from what I said before, um, so from now on, So basically, um, the, glo so the global structure of our sheet will be a local system on the complement of these points in degree minus one, plus a whole lot of local local data, which we'll describe now.
che è più oralizzante per esempio o no? No, I mean we haven't described what the category looks like. Did it be for star zero and two? No, we did we did P1. Ah, P1, so yeah. And also I want to explain actually where this quiver comes from. Yeah. So we have an obvious functor, so uh, we denote by J in inclusion. So we have an exact functor. zero to M for local systems. Shifted by one. And this is the same thing as um, the category of vector space B uh, minus dimensional K vector space. And so now the question becomes, what is the extra data that we need to extend our proportion over zero? And the theorem is that M0 is equivalent to the category of pairs of um, So first I fix L in lock K of U. And so then I have my V in my by U plus a diagram of the following form V This says that if we fix our local system, so this means that we fix this part of our diagram, then extensions across zero are the same thing as giving such a diagram, so as giving a factorization of our map. So now there's a kind of general philosophy, which is that imagine that we're given some abelian category, <coughs> how do we try to understand it? So the, the key is to find exact functors on our category. Here, is is Sorry? M0 is? Um, M0 is? M0. Yeah, Pomoshi is on U with only, singularity, with only a singularity origin. Constructible with respect to this code. So, given a perverse, so given a normal, normal um, constructible sheet, we have a whole lot of stores. So we can just, and these give us a whole lot of exact functors. And basically, by understanding all these exact functors, we understand constructible sheets. But the problem with perverse sheets is there's no natural, uh, natural exact functor at zero. So we could, we, we need an exact function replacing stalk at zero. If we just take the stalk at zero, we get a two-term complex. We get something concentrated in degree minus one and zero from this picture up here. And that's good, but it's not, a, it's not an element of an immediate value. So this uh, exact function is W? 
so under this equivalence, it's precisely this, this bug to W, exactly. And so now um, it turns out, so the proposition is the following. So we consider um, the following diagram. So this is our, our closed disk without. So let's say that we this is the seven band that's moved to one without one. And we consider the inclusion into band that's to one. And then we consider the inclusion of one pi. And then the proposition is that F goes to H. So if F is in M0, then H0 of X of um, this with values in is concentrated. <coughs> so hence, this is our required function. W, the value of this function. And so what, what is W? Mm -hmm. Sorry? What is W? Well, no, I mean, how would you transcribe it? It's from this problem. How do you transcribe W in this theorem? Uh, so, yeah, basically, I'm slowly explaining the theorem. Uh, and the first step is to know, like, assume that this, this equivalence is valid then I have an exact function on, on this category, which is this W. And so the first question is, what is this W? Yeah. And secondly, what are these maps? Yeah. And it turns out that W is this function. I have this H0. This H0, yeah. yeah. So this is W. So is this going to replace the stock at 0? Yes, exactly. With the stock at 1? Well, no. so, um, Okay, I, I just want to explain a little bit, like this looks completely bizarre, no, taking this topology. I don't think anyone, you know, it's not something you would naturally guess. But I want to explain quickly where it comes from. So one, this, this, this is a kind of fundamental thing. So this H0 of D is equal to the vanishing cycles. So. And it's an extremely important functor on perverse sheaves that exists in an extremely large generality. Um, but I just want to explain a kind of Morse theory uh, origin first. So one motivation. So basically this has many motivations, but one motivation. Is the following. So. We have our f on this disk, and we consider z is closed subset. It's closed subset, and include that into everything, and then the complement. 
you can also call B. And it's important that zero is in this side. Now it's easy to see that um, I'm calling this A I want to call this B. I'm just saying, like, I, I include this this present inside my disk, and this is the inclusion of the complement. We punch about zero, so what do you Sorry? Well, I'm just emphasizing that this point should be on this side of the line, that this point should not be in there. And what's easy to see is that H zero of this disk with values in B tilde. It's just the same functor as what we're writing now. <coughs> and now the long exact sequence So this this guy measures <coughs> change in cohomology of F as we cross the singular point. So imagine that we're trying to work out the, the cohomology of our sheet from the perspective of Moore's theory. We would consider some level set and we would look at how the cohomology changes as we slowly move our level set. And this guy is measuring exactly what that change is as we cross this singular point. And also you'll probably notice that up there I have this, I chose this point one, which seems artificial, and that corresponds to the fact that we can cross cross this in different ways. And actually the, the choice of one is important and it actually gives an automorphism on this function that I won't discuss today. So that's some motivation for considering this group. And one of the many miracles of perverse sheaves is that for a constructible sheaf, this thing can be concentrated in many degrees. And so Morse theory is very complicated for a constructible sheet, but for a perverse sheet, this is concentrated in one degree, which is an extremely important problem. Okay, so now we prove this proposition.
Okay, so number one is that we have the, this restriction map that stalk at zero. And then this induces a nice walk, so we'll put it on top of So this is what I was saying about constructability. If you think about um, the stalk at zero, it's a direct limit over all, all neighborhoods of zero. However, all of these neighborhoods are just the same. You know, it's the same sheaf on, on an isomorphic space. And so these, these are just kind of over looking grants. Second lemma is that H minus one of F injects into H minus one of J lower star So the way to think about this is that if I have a section of my perverse sheet in degree minus one, uh, I want to say that, that I can ignore the origin. And this corresponds to the, the fact about the machines that they're not allowed to have anything supported at uh, in degree minus one of zero. So we'll see this in the proof. Uh, in this famous F is a, a bit of a sheet. Yes, throughout F. And the second name I is probably positive. It's one. Ah, it is one, it's not one. Minus one. Yeah. And your H's are these Greek or what? No, they're cohomology. I really want vector spaces. So I could, I mean, I can write. Uh, so, cohomology where? This is the cohomology of this disk, this value in the sheet. And this I can rewrite. actually follow from that long exact sequence kernel co-kernel that I did. You mean minus one? Thank you. So it's a K. Okay. Yeah. 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 Wow, what am I doing? Okay, so, so the proof, I'm, I'm kind of repeating something I did before, but anyway. if we look at this guy, you have this thing to try with. And this belongs, by the perverse conditions, to the D. We're going to move to two. zero. This guy is concentrated in degrees bigger than or equal to zero by the perverse conditions, and it's been by zero. So now we take, if we apply H star of D. So this is something supported on points in degrees bigger than or equal to zero. So this, this is zero. This is something. This is something. But this is an injection. Which is what we're And finally, Okay. 
projects into a plasma stalker. And the proof of this is that we have seen in the exercises. So now this is just the total volume of a local system, and we're asking, so a local system in degree minus one, and we're saying, uh, do I know a global section if I know it's stalk at some point? And this is true on a connected space. So we've seen this in the exercises. This map is just the invariance under mu, included in the particular subjective. So now we can prove this composition. By level one, we've seen that this is just the cohomology of the stalker theorem, <coughs> which by the perverse conditions is zero star. just the cohomology of the stalk at one. So this is concentrated in degree minus one. And this lemma tells us that this map is injected. Now by the long exact figures, this is zero, zero, zero here. Which is what we want to show. So we've produced our exact functor. Now we just need to explain how it fits into one of it fits into this diagram. Um, octahedron that Giorini 
mentioned on uh, in the last lecture. So let's consider that. So this is completely general. The proposition was the fact that the cohomology of this guy on the left is concentrated in degree zero. So this is the key, this is our key exact function. This is our vanishing cycle. And I, I hope to explain the kind of classical theory of vanishing cycles. And there one sees that this really is the same thing as what people call vanishing cycles in the classical. So now I just want to explain this octahedron in this general like octahedron graph. So imagine that I have three closed subsets. So if I have a closed subset inside my space, I have a long exact sequence. And now I imagine that I have a, a flag of closed subspaces, so this is Y. So I have Z, 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 Y, Y, closed. And then I let U denote the complement of Y and V denote the complement of Z. And for um, A close and A in the inclusion into X. I want to write FA for phi lower star phi F. And for V open, I want to write F V tree so This is just the notation that will, uh, that will simplify. Simplify what I'm about right there. And so, so just so in this diagram, U is this complement here, and V is this. So now we have this octahedron. One of the activities of the triangular category is that given any commutative triangle, I can complete it to an octahedron, which looks like the following. So I have F. So F is just an element of the derived category of X. So I have my F. I have a map the restriction to Y. comes from is the, so in this case the complement, so this would be f on x, the complement of um, z in x <coughs> is u u in v, f u u in v star, the complement of y in x is u,
And here the key thing for us will be what happens here, so this will be x dead. When you write the facts, is it just f? Yeah. So one of Vignolini's um, exercises in Freiburg was to contemplate this octahedron, like what it means, what all these maps mean in general. So this is the And so now, what um, for us, the important part of this octahedron will be this piece here. Exactly what we were calling before B truth the other. F. And now if we head cohology. This gives us B. The stalk at the stalk at one. So this is not complicated. And this is precisely our vanishing cycle. Do a 
sends the constant shape on U to the diagram. And this I'll call I C U. I C point, which is defined to be the sky shape of zero. Zero, zero. So you can think about the value zero here as saying that the cohomology of this sheaf does not change as we move across zero. In this k, he says that the cohomology of the sheaf at the start we're evaluating the zero sheaf and then we go, well, we pick up a k. So that's what <coughs> um, J, zero, zero, lower star, and the constant sheaf on u, shifted by one, goes to the object Again, the cohomology changes as we move across zero.